offensive interference. And getting those two first downs by half a link. End of the game here if they don't get 20 yards. Here goes Rodgers again. All the way downfield, and it's going to be caught by Janice at the 35-yard line. How in the world against that defense do you get a guy free? So Janice is there. The clock keeps running. Rodgers says, let's spike it. They got to get him set. We're down under a half a minute. That's 61 yards on a fourth and 20. 27 seconds. They're going to run a play. Yeah, they're going to run it. Rodgers. They didn't get set. No, they didn't get set. The flag is down. So they didn't get set. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. And whatever happens there. And there's going to be a 10-second runoff as well here. So Rodgers went up to try to spike it. Then he wanted to run a play. Richard Rodgers wasn't set. The guy was the big hero in the Hail Mary against Detroit. He doesn't get set. Here's Blakeman. Illegal motion. Offense number 82. It's a five-yard penalty, but there's no 10-second runoff. Still first down. So no 10-second runoff in this particular instance. I think they should have shut the play down. But there's motion, isn't there? Right. Uh, oh, my god. It's goodness. a live ball foul, which was the reason that there wasn't a runoff on that. So you got 12 seconds. And so it's first down and 15, and now you got to... The play is stopped before because of a timeout taken by Arizona. Arizona takes its second timeout. This is the 30-second timeout. They could have they, they didn't shut the play down to go back to the prior play. So the ball was alive, which is the reason there was no runoff. But Rodgers was up there to try to spike it and instead wanted to run a play. And that takes the clock down. They put an extra second back on, so there's 12 seconds remaining. Well, regardless, there was so much time wasted there by not taking Absolutely. the spike. The down meant nothing at that point because of where the clock was. So by trying to get the play off, there was confusion. You get the offsides, and you end up with just 12 seconds to go. Right. He said it took him 20 seconds to get down the field after a 61-yard catch just like out of the end zone you're going to see Rodgers by time probably moving around one way or another if he wants the Hail Mary maybe one before that they send him all the way back to the 40 he, he, he's trying to get his feet set now he throws and just has to save whatever vestiges remain on the clock five seconds well and here's what has to happen and you go all the way back to Doug Flutie days Anytime you've got a Hail Mary, you have to give your receivers time to get into the end zone. So the quarterback has to buy some time. He has to move around for a little while and then set up the deep throw. And the great thing that Aaron Rodgers did on that Hail Mary against Detroit was to throw it so high it gave Richard Rodgers a chance to go straight vertical and go get it. I would rush the edge and not allow Aaron Rodgers to get outside the pocket here. You saw the Cardinals moving around defensively trying to get set, and they call a timeout. I mean, you had a whole bunch of defenders saying, you go here, you go here, and they had to call a timeout. Completely not set. The other thing that I always thought should be an option here is to try and jam up these receivers and let those pass rushers go because if they don't get to the end zone, your receivers, there's no play. We'll go to the Hail Mary against Detroit. This ended the game on a Thursday night. 68 yards in the air, and I'm telling you, that ball was sky high. And Richard Rodgers made the catch. And what Richard Rodgers did was he was outside the end zone and backpedaled into it, which gave him perfect position to make that play and save their season. Second down, forget the 15. It's all about five seconds. They're going to bring pressure. Well, they did the last time, too, which I thought was pretty smart. They got Rodgers backpedaling. He resets Starks. They are going to bring pressure again. Rodgers is going to roll away. 
Throws it up in the air. Says a prayer. And Janice does he oh, stop it? Oh, please. <laughs> what a catch. That's insane. Oh, my. That may be one of the great throws ever made. Moving to his left. Falling away and launching a perfect throw. That's insane. Now go back. Of course, we have to watch this again. Did he have control? They look at it. It's a scoring play. Is it a catch? Ball is bouncing around on his chest. Oh. Ooh. That was Peterson behind him. Johnson comes in. Johnson got his hand on the ball. And then once he was in the end zone, then there was a late punch out there. I think he had control for a moment. And then it was Rashad Johnson. Is there control right there? And now Rashad Johnson comes in and punches it out. That's the way I would see that. Look at this throw. Unbelievable. Completely falling away, pressure in his face, and he launches. This and, is insane. Yeah, Janice got permission. There's a lot of discussion going on in New York right now. <laughs> Back with the result. Wow. I can't believe this thing. The verdict. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands as called. It is a touchdown. So Jeff Janis makes it 20 to 19, and now Mason Crosby has all of the pressure. Does he send it to overtime? One of the best kickers in the league. Rick Lovato snapping it, Tim Maste holding it Perfect. to tie the game. On the year. And it's tied at 2020. Jeff Janis. Two catches last year, two catches this year in the regular season, and tonight seven for 145 yards, a 60-yard catch on the fourth and 20, and a 41-yard catch for a touchdown. I mean, Jeff Janis is on the back side of this. He really is not even involved. Reacts back to the football. Patrick Peterson, who's been flawless all year, but watch this throw. I cannot believe that he got that into the end zone. That's a play you call in a street game. There aren't a handful of quarterbacks in the history of the National Football League that are athletic enough to make that turn, that pivot, and strong enough armed to get it into the end zone. And they have a chance to win two games on plays just like that. This is insane. And he was pressured by Marcus Golden. Now you're going to get Blakeman bringing the guys out. You got the coin toss. You know how this works. The team that receives scores a touchdown game over, a field goal or less. The other team gets it. it and did. we play on it. And unlike the regular season, this game Correct. cannot end in a tie. We can be here until a week from Tuesday. Okay, gentlemen, overtime in the postseason. We will continue to play until we determine a winner. Both teams are going to have an opportunity to possess the ball unless the first team on offense scores a touchdown or there's a defensive score. Each team's going to have three timeouts per half, and all replays are going to be handled upstairs. Good? Okay. Again, the shield side is heads, the T side is tails. The shield is heads, the T side is tails. Green Bay, visiting team, it's your choice. Tails is the call. Tails is the call. Yeah, we want the ball. Yeah, we want the ball. No, it didn't flip. It didn't flip. It didn't flip. It didn't flip. I can't. I'm gonna flip. Oh, please! You can't make any of this it up. It's heads. You want the ball? Which way you want to kick? Okay, so wait a second. It didn't flip. The coin went up and didn't flip, and so they had to re-flip it. Come on, Al. How long have you been doing this? I'm gonna flip right now. <laughs> this is nuts. <laughs> Again, the overtime rules each team the opportunity to possess the ball unless the team receiving the kickoff in this case Arizona scores a touchdown anything less the ball will at least be taken by Green Bay for a possession if they're tied after one possession each the next score wins unlike the regular season game cannot end in a tie 
In the regular season, each team gets two timeouts, but because this is like the start of a new game and a half, you get three timeouts. So Crosby to put the ball in the air. And Nelson will take it and take a knee in the end zone. Now, you talk about having cameras everywhere. When have you ever seen this? We have a camera on the coin. And you heard what the guy said. It didn't flip, and it didn't flip. I've seen pizzas flip more than that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is that? Oh, the, man. The odd, he couldn't do that again no. if he tried it 100 no. times and you, not have it flip once. You can't. Really perceptive, though, by Aaron Rodgers to recognize that and immediately call for <laughs> All the Packers did. Kuhn was out there. Matthews. Kuhn was laughing by the end of it. So now Arizona from the 20-yard line. Blitz coming. Matthews. Palmer stepping away at first. Palmer extending the play. Nobody there. Crosses the field. Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald is going to take it into Green Bay territory. Larry Fitzgerald inside the 30. The 20. If he Larry scores, it's over. It's insane to the four-yard line. One of the greatest postseason performers ever. His 08 postseason was one for the ages. So what happens here? 75 yards, first and goal. As great as it was by Fitzgerald, it may be better by Carson Palmer. Watch this. Escape somehow finds Fitzgerald across the field to set this entire thing up. And this was a huge tackle at the end because if Fitzgerald scores, it's over. Great play by Casey Hayward to give him a chance. And with what we've seen around the goal line from Arizona, who knows? Meanwhile, the play clock all the way down, and so Arizona, Arizona will have to take a timeout. Took everybody through all the excitement and everything and having to go 75 yards to get down there. Go back to see what Fitzgerald did to get free. Well, he's going to come all the way across the field, but because all the scrambling was happening, and the idea that Carson Palmer, who is not known for his mobility, not in the least, look at that stiff arm by Morgan Burnett, could scramble around and then somehow find Larry Fitzgerald. Runs into Bobby Massey. I've seen everything. Oh, yeah. I have seen everything. That's seven catches for Larry Fitzgerald, 171 yards. First and goal from the five. David Johnson is the running back. Fitzgerald set to the right. He's going to go to Fitz again. Incomplete. That time Sam Shields covering second down and goal. But they are also flying the safety over the top. Ha ha Clinton Dix is flying over the top to Larry Fitzgerald. Somebody has to get that in there to Carson Palmer. You have got to be really careful now. They are not going to let Fitzgerald beat him down here on the goal line. John Brown sets up on the left side. Much tighter formation this time out of the shotgun. Brown is the motion man. Little flip to Fitzgerald. He scores! And the Cardinals win an amazing game. That gang was one for the ages. begin to write the story of this one. Shovel pass motion here pull in front and simply up in between a very old fashioned play that a very old fashioned play caller Bruce Arians came up with at the perfect time and who better than Larry Fitzgerald who simply took over this football game. Carson Palmer on the scramble, 
They lose Larry Fitzgerald, and here you go. Bay. <laughs> I just can't believe what I'm seeing out of this ball game. Al, yep. come on, you've been yep. doing this a long time. You've seen anything uh, like it? No, uh, this is, as I said, this is this is one for the books here. In so many ways, there's so many plays, and it ends with number 11 going into the end zone. Arizona moves on. Green Bay goes home. Post game next.